Is the U.S. Federal Reserve at war with European banks? Welcome back to the Bitcoin Layer. I'm Nick Batia, and today we are going to examine the thesis that Jerome Powell is trying to claw back monetary policy away from Europe. Recently, I had the pleasure of speaking with political analyst Tom Luongo. Now, many of you find his work very compelling, and so I wanted to dive into Tom's thesis on why he thinks the Fed is going to keep hiking rates. Now, Luongo admits that he is not a bond guy and more of a political analyst that tries to connect the dots together, but I found his analysis on the bond market happenings of 2021 and this year to be very compelling. Now, his overall thesis is that the Federal Reserve is now attempting to regain control of its monetary policy away from Europe and away from the LIBOR markets. Readers of Layered Money will be familiar with this general concept that the U.S. Federal Reserve is functioning as the backstop to European banks via the Fed ECB central bank swap line. Now, remember in August of 2007, the spread between LIBOR and Fed funds widened off of zero materially for the first time, indicating that there was a big problem in European dollar funding, aka the euro dollar market. In December of 2007, the Fed put on a swap line with both the European Central Bank and the Swiss National Bank, the two major central banks in Europe, in order to give dollar liquidity to the banks in those countries. So how do these swap lines work? The Fed prints dollars and extends a loan to the European Central Bank. The European Central Bank prints euros and posts euros as collateral to the Fed. And then the ECB takes those dollars and lends them out to its member banks. Why would the ECB do this and why would the Fed extend a swap line to the ECB? Well, it's because the European banks do have an outsized influence on U.S. Federal Reserve policy because if the European banks were to go down, it would cause a financial crisis on both sides of the Atlantic due to the interconnectedness of counterparty risk between American and European banks. So this is why in 2007, the Fed extended dollar liquidity to European banks because it needed to make sure those European banks didn't collapse. Now, what is Luongo saying this time around? He is saying, he is arguing that the Fed is not going to be that backstop for the European banks that it once was and that we have actually seen a material shift in the Fed's policy towards Europe. What is his evidence for this? He goes back to June 2021 and identifies a very nuanced monetary policy decision that the Fed made as the center of this shift. Now, here is a headline from Reuters from June 2021 from that June FOMC meeting with regard to this very nuanced money market decision that the Fed made. The headline reads, Fed gives money funds relief with short-term rate adjustments. And I'll read you a little bit of this article just so you get familiar with the concept. The Federal Reserve on Wednesday gave relief to money market investors that have been struggling to find high-quality short-term assets by raising two key short-term rates. The Fed raised the interest rate it pays banks on reserves held at the U.S. Central Bank. It also lifted the rate it pays on overnight reverse repurchase agreements. So, the Fed raised rates in these corners of the money market in which money funds, for example, invest on a very short-term basis. Now, why did the Fed make this adjustment? Luongo is arguing that it is an attempt to drain liquidity from the LIBOR markets, from the euro dollar markets, by increasing the rate on the reverse repo facility. Now, functionally, how would something like this happen? And why would it draw liquidity out of Europe into the United States? Let's take a money market fund, for example, that invests in different short-term instruments. Okay, let's give an example of XYZ money fund and how the 
decision that the Fed made would affect the way that XYZ money fund invests. So let's pretend that part of the XYZ money fund's holdings is deposits with a European bank. Now, mind you, these deposits will be dollar denominated, but because they are with a European bank, let's say BNP Paribas, for example, in France, that the deposits held in dollar terms at BNP Paribas is part of the LIBOR market. It's part of offshore dollar funding. Now, the yield that BNP Paribas offered the money fund, let's just say, was 50 basis points, half of a percent. In this example, the Fed is raising the rate it offers to the RRP facility, which means that in this example, the Fed now says you can achieve 55 basis points with us keeping your money at the Fed overnight risk-free. So what does XYZ Money Fund do? It looks at BNP Paribas offering 50 basis points in the LIBOR offshore dollar market, for example, and it looks at the Fed offering 55 basis points in the onshore market with the counterparty being the Fed instead of BNP Paribas. What do you think the money fund would do? It is likely to pull money out of BNP Paribas and put it at the Fed because of the relative yield and the relative risk. So let's see if Luongo's theory held when looking at reverse repo balances held at the Fed. And sure enough, look at this chart. We can see that the RRP facility started to attract capital in a very serious way starting in the summer of 2021. And it climbed and climbed weekly until it got to a level above $2 trillion that was parked at the Fed overnight every day. Where does that money come from? A lot of it had to have come from offshore dollar markets. And Luongo's theory here is that the Fed is trying to drain the base liquidity from the euro dollar system by attracting capital back into the onshore dollar market. Why would the Fed want to do this? Well, as we know from 2007, when European banks go into crisis, the Fed has to be there to step in as the lender of last resort. In layered money, I called the Fed the lender of only resort because the ECB wouldn't be able to print dollars to provide dollar liquidity to those European banks. Now, do you think the Federal Reserve enjoys having European banks dictate just how they enact monetary policy? No, and that's what Luongo is trying to get across here. He doesn't believe that the Fed is any longer willing to play this game where it has to be the bailout function for Europe and European dollar liquidity shortfalls. Now, if we look at the chart on the dollar versus the euro, we can see that in June 2021, there was a large move negative in the euro and a persistent weakening for the last year and a half, really since this moment, that the Fed decided to raise rates on the reverse repo facility. At the Bitcoin layer, we always preach price is truth. So there is some basis to this theory that in June 2021, the Fed made a policy shift in order to start affecting Europe. Now, the title of this video is, is the US Federal Reserve at war with these European banks? I think it is too early to say. Why? Because we are finally heading into a period in which tight U.S. monetary policy is starting to affect the rest of the world. We see the dollar reaching multi-decade highs versus a basket of foreign currencies, and we see it reaching a very, very strong level versus Europe. Now, we've already seen Christine Lagarde, the president of the ECB, basically start to beg the Fed to slow down and to start getting coordinated on monetary policy, which means Christine Lagarde is asking Jerome Powell to please confer with her on monetary policy decisions so that Europe isn't affected in a negative way. And I do believe that Luongo's theory is right until proven wrong. This is because the way that the Fed has tightened monetary policy so far this year, it only seems like it is focused on one thing and one thing only, and that is its inflation mandate. We know that the Fed has two official mandates and very broadly, practically four mandates. Now, the two stated mandates are 
price level, so stable inflation, and employment, so stable employment and a stable job market. What are the two unofficial mandates of the Fed? The S&P 500 and the global financial system. So when we get into the global financial system part of the Fed's unofficial mandate, we can see that the Fed is not concerned about the global financial system right now, but it might be forced to over the coming weeks and months. And that's how we will really see this theory play out. Whether or not the Fed is there to wage war, a full all out war on European banks and crush the European economy by continuing to raise rates and enact quantitative tightening, or is it going to ease off of its tightening and pause rate hikes, maybe potentially even pause QT and give some relief to the European banks? We will have to wait and see. Thanks for joining us today at the Bitcoin Layer to discuss the Fed and European Central Bank dynamic. Make sure to subscribe. And I want to thank our sponsor, Voltage. Voltage provides Bitcoin and Lightning Network node infrastructure for businesses and individuals. Definitely go check out their website and spin up your own node with Voltage.